Hello and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to give it just a moment to allow folks to trickle in. And our reps can actually keep their camera off. Um, and when I announce you, you'll be able to jump back in. Alrighty, we'll just give it another moment. Allow a few more folks to join. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us um, for the College Fair of Greater Denver. We're excited to have you all with us and we have some fantastic colleges and universities here this evening to tell you a little bit more about their institutions. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Your camera and microphone are off. You're, so you're muted right now, your video is off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So you may be thinking, well, how do I ask questions? And we definitely want you to ask questions. So questions are more than welcome. We want you to use the Q&A button to type your questions to, pre to the presenters at any time. Um, there's not a specific time in which you're, you, you're restricted to asking. You can use that Q&A function at any time during this session. And we highly encourage you to. I know all of our admissions reps here tonight are excited to uh, answer your questions and get back to you and connect. Um, uh, the College Fair also has many more opportunities. There are more sessions going on, and we highly encourage you to check out all the all the college presentations that are going to be happening, um, and sign up for sign up for more. I know there's two additional after this, and I think there's some going on tomorrow as well. This session is recorded, so um, the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Denver if you ever want to go back and watch the recording or view recordings of other sessions. Excellent. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Sacred Heart University. Thanks so much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sarah Kalaski. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. I'm actually based here right in Denver, Colorado, so I'm enjoying the rain as much as you are today. Um, so if you have any questions or if you find Sacred Heart on your list down the line, please don't hesitate to reach out. To get started, Sacred Heart's a mid-sized Catholic university. We're about um, just shy of 6,000 students undergrad and about 9,000 total with grad and part-time. We're located in Fairfield, Connecticut, so we're just an hour and a half outside of New York City. We're in this quintessential New England college town. We're uh, 20 minutes away from the ocean, 20 minutes away from hiking, historical sites, and we're also in the third most concentrated area of Fortune 500 companies. So, as are all of our majors require at least one internship to graduate, um, those resources are readily available for our students. So um, it's a great spot if you're considering the East Coast as an option, you have a lot of access um, and you'll learn a lot about public transit. So it's a great time. Um, in terms of our academics, we're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education. So we have over 60 majors to choose from, 40 of which have a combined or an accelerated graduate opportunity. So um, you can start thinking about these as a high school senior, as a college freshman, sophomore, junior, there's all different tracks for students to um, think about depending on what grades they're coming in with, what classes they have transfer and things like that. Um, we're most notably known for our health profession programs. Nursing is our number one, um, along with our PT program, which is also offered as a six year and seven year track. Um, but then we branch out into business, criminal justice, psychology, cybersecurity. Um, we have all different kinds of programs that students can choose from and really try to emphasize that liberal arts experience through exploration. Most students do come in undecided. And to order to help with that, um, we have our career office that works with freshmen in their first year um, through Discover You. So you're partnered with a career advisor, working on your resume, working on finding those internships. So if you did wait until sophomore year to declare, um, that's all readily available for you. 
Um, just to quickly highlight, yes, we're a Catholic institution, but we became independent from the church shortly after our founding. So what that means is we don't receive funding from the archdiocese. It means that we also have a lot of flexibility with our curriculum and what students can do with their relationship with the faith. Um, we don't have religious requirements. Um, I think the big takeaway from our commitment to um, the faith itself is our dedication to community service. We have over 100,000 hours of service completed on campus every year and all of the clubs and activities we do have, um, Habitat for Humanity is our largest student club. So I think it's a testament to um, community culture and wanting to be involved both locally and globally. As I kind of mentioned, we're really in this pivotal growth phase right now. We're one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic institutions in the country. We've had high pass rates um, for all of our um, NCLEX boards, exams, anything that you're taking and with regards to higher learning, but also branching out in a lot of areas too. We're top 20 in the country for a performing arts program um, with a direct connection to Broadway. Um, and as I mentioned, community service is really big, but also branching out into places like engineering, game design, innovation, technological sciences, um, um, and we've had a 99% job placement rate in some of the most competitive industries in the country. So it's a really great time to come in as a SHU student. We've really been able to tailor it to what the modern student currently needs, just being a younger university and being able to have this flexibility with the curriculum that we've had since our founding. In the last six years, we've had 18 new buildings introduced to campus. Um, this is not even the most updated slide because we we just broke ground on our ice hockey arena, which will be set and complete in 2023. Um, we're also adding new programs and majors, including a new music major. We've added a women's wrestling division one program, and we're one of five um, teams in the entire country at the division one level to have a female head coach. So it's really awesome time. Um, lots of things happening on campus. We have new dormitories. Some of our freshmen are, are staying in the newest dorms um, to date. Um, we have new dining options. Um, we're expanding within Fairfield itself. We have um, what is GE's former headquarters is now home to um, our College of Business and Technology. So my undecided engineers have the opportunity to work in 11,000 square foot makerspace, artificial intelligence labs, game design labs, and such. So really great, exciting time, lots of growth happening on campus. And finally, I just want to provide our admissions um, checklist for you. Um, we're really straightforward. Students are very self-selecting when they apply to SHU. They find a fit, whether it's location, it's a major, um, it's community, whatever draws them to the East Coast. But um, we just ask for the common application. We ask for official high school transcript and a letter of recommendation. All of the ranges in terms of GPA and testing are going to be listed on this page. They're going to be a higher consideration for our College of Nursing just because that is our most competitive direct entry program. And you must apply by December 15th in order to be considered for our College of Nursing. Um, we are test optional. We have been test optional for 15 years. Um, I, we're more looking at um, your overall high school experience, um, the extracurriculars you're involved in, as well if you, if you have the opportunity to visit. Um, we are open, it, open for limited in-person visits at this time. Um, but like I said, I live in Denver. So if you have the opportunity to connect with me, I'd love to meet with you, host an interview, um, or meet you at your school if I'm hosting a visit there. Um, all students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. 93% of students are receiving some type of financial aid. And I think that's about my time. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight and I will pass it off to my colleague at UConn. Excellent, thank you so much, Sacred Heart. Um, as mentioned, our next college up is University of Connecticut. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for joining today. My name is Caitlin Wilcox Perry. I'm one of the admission officers at UConn, primarily responsible for the recruitment and reading and evaluation of applications for students coming from um, all of these lovely areas. So if you do have any questions after the presentation, please feel free to reach out to me via email. I'll put my email in the chat at the very end as well. So at the University of Connecticut, we are a mid-sized public university. So we have five campuses with a, around 24,000 total undergrads um, spread out across all five of those campuses. Our main campus is located in Storrs, Connecticut, 
and we do have regional campuses in Hartford, Waterbury, Avery Point, and Stamford. Um, and if you're wondering, um, you know, where, where we are, where we're located, um, or where Connecticut might be, we are located in the heart of the Northeast. Stores is conveniently located in the northeastern part of the state, so we're about an hour and a half from Boston and about two and a half hours from New York City. Um, and Stores is a rural town, so if you ever get to come and visit, the first thing that you'll probably notice is our huge farm that we have on campus. We started as a school of agriculture back when we were founded, and it's still a really big part of our campus community. We have farm animals, farm facilities, um, and we actually have our own dairy bar at UConn um, where we make our own ice cream. Um, and at UConn, we are invested in providing students with a warm, inclusive, and richly diverse community for all students to thrive. So truly being one community with many cultures, we have more than 90 countries and 42 states represented within our student body. And we also have about a 14% international student population. Um, and we also do have six cultural centers on campus dedicated towards inclusivity and providing students, providing support for the social behavioral and cultural needs of our students. And they also work collaboratively to bring light to, light to issues that face um, the community of our underrepresented uh, populations at UConn as well. So jumping into the academic programs at UConn, we have over 115 majors and over 320 minors and concentrations. And all of our majors are housed into 10 different schools and colleges. So our top most selective programs can be found in the School of Business, uh, the School of Nursing and the School of Engineering. And we also do offer some unique academic opportunities through our special programs in medicine, dental medicine, law and education, uh, where students have the opportunity to earn both their undergraduate degree with us and their graduate degree right you know, here at UConn. Um, and a majority of our students are enrolled in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, about 41% of our student population. So majors such as uh, psychology, communication, political science, biology, those are all really popular programs at UConn as well. And if you don't know exactly what you'd like to study, you're more than welcome to come in undecided. We have a great set of advisors in our academic center for exploratory students who will work with you and help kind of figure out what your interests are, what careers you're looking to go into, and how those align to the majors that we offer. Um, and our student faculty ratio is 16 to 1. Average class size is about 30 to 35 students. So this definitely gives students the opportunity to attend a larger school, but still have that smaller campus feel within the classroom. Um, and especially once you dive deeper into your academic program, those class sizes go down um, even more. So moving on to student life on campus, um, our students at UConn have a lot of school spirit. We have 21 NCAA Division I athletic teams with 23 national championships across um, those D1 teams. So a lot of school spirit, men's and women's basketball games are definitely some of our most popular events. They're free for students to attend as well. Um, and in addition to that, we do have over 700 different clubs and activities. We have Greek lifes, we have acapella groups, dance groups, we have a skydiving club, and really so much more. So there is truly something uh, here for everyone at UConn. And we also do understand the importance of experiential hands-on learning opportunities in the form of internships, co-ops, shadowing, and more. Uh, so every year we have over 700 companies on our campus actively recruiting our students. Um, service is also really important to our students. 1.3 million hours are spent by our students uh, giving back. One of our really cool um, community service events that our students do each year is called Huskython. It's an 18 hour dance marathon where students raise money for the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. Um, and it's completely student run. And uh, this past year, they raised a little over $1.5 million for the event. So it's Again, a huge success and really special to our students here um, at the university. And we do also have over 200 different study abroad opportunities. So if you're interested in taking your education outside of UConn, outside of Connecticut, um, we offer those experiences when it's convenient for you. So we do offer the typical semester long trips, but we also offer short term trips during winter break, spring break and summer break as well. So quickly moving through the application process at UConn, we do a holistic review and evaluating your application. So that means we're looking at every single piece of information that you choose to submit, not just focusing solely on your academics. So we are looking at your extracurricular involvement, personal qualities, and any additional factors that can be revealed through your 
essay and your optional letters of recommendation. And this holistic review also applies to our merit scholarship and honors consideration, and you're automatically considered for those opportunities when you apply. Um, UConn is also test optional, and we will be test optional through the fall 2023 admission cycle. So with that, students have the opportunity to choose whether or not they'd like to submit, but no student will be disadvantaged or negatively impacted if they choose not to submit. And this test optional policy also applies to our merit scholarship and honors consideration as well. If you do have any more questions or need anything else about the application process, I do recommend taking a look at our website. And our website also does also have some really great um, virtual resources for students and also in-person visits as well. So I'll put this link in the chat for you all after I'm done here. But thank you so much for joining. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. Excellent, thank you so much, University of Connecticut. And now, um, we're, we're gonna hear from Connecticut College. Perfect. Hello, everybody. My name is Rosendo Anguiano Sainz, and I'm an assistant director of admission here at Connecticut College. And we are located in New London, Connecticut, right on the coast. We are a 750 acre arboretum with direct access to the waterfront, and that is the Thames River in the back. And so, obviously, this whole presentation, I had to start with the obligatory aerial view of the campus because it is quite beautiful and we are a small private liberal arts college. We house between 18 and 1900 students from some 37 countries and 40 states, including Washington DC. Um, our student to faculty ratio is nine to one. And yeah, continuing on getting into something that's a little relevant to you is the first year experience which is something that we really pride ourselves on is making sure that every student when they come to con is prepared for their next four years while they're at con and even afterwards so starting with the first year experience one of the hallmarks is the first year seminar or fys and there are some 30 to 35 topics taught every year and they rotate there is also a cap size of never more than 17 students. And the entire goal of the class is to prepare you for the work in the next four years. Like I was saying, so that will include writing seminars different and different seminars related to study skills, research, and the opportunities on campus. Um, okay, it's working. Okay, perfect. Um, Yes. Okay. So yes, the first year seminar, it's also an interdisciplinary class that is meant to really challenge the way you're thinking and to set you up for those next years. Along with that, we have an, an entire academic advising team or advising team of five members. And so the first is the academic advisor, which will be your major advisor when you declare, but when you first show up, it'll be your first year seminar professor. And that is the class that you'll take. That'll be your first class you take while on campus. Then you'll have a staff advisor and they're going to help you connect to all the resources for advancement and support on campus because there are a lot to be offered. And so you'll be given someone a contact in order to understand everything that's available to you. You'll also have a career advisor, which I'll touch on more. And their entire goal is to really think about the aftercon and help you plan for that while you're still on campus. And then you'll have two student advisors and those will be sophomores who have just finished your first year experience just like you but they'll be able to help you both academically and socially, which will be a nice bonus. Um, they'll understand how to build a class schedule and help you understand all of the timing and the best way to build your own schedule for yourself in your first semester. And then also the social, uh, the social dynamic on campus and the campus culture of being a very welcoming and in very welcoming campus. Oh. Okay, perfect. All right, and then our entire curriculum is called the Connections Curriculum, and our, our goal is to put the liberal arts in action. And so I'll kind of get into that. And at the end of your sophomore year, you'll have you'll declare a major, and so you'll have four semesters to decide, though you can decide earlier if you want, and you can always change later. That is kind of the goal of the Connections Curriculum, is to let you pursue what you want. And in that vein, there are the Pathways and Center. And these are two different ways in which to approach an integrative research and a culminating senior project. And the pathways are very much a self-designed, you'll take a singular class and then the rest you'll pick any set of classes to help support all of your interests and a central theme. And so a couple examples of themes are entrepreneurship, food, creativity, and public health. And there are 14. 
And then interdisciplinary centers are actually a little more structured. So you'll apply to them and there's a larger amount of staff that will work with you on your project and picking a set of classes. And you'll also have an intro and a capstone that go along with it. They'll help you find research opportunities as well as internships and study abroad. And so the center will be a little more structured and the pathways will have a little more freedom, but they'll both end in that senior research project, which you can present at the All College Symposium, something that we're holding our third annual this very fall. And it's a great opportunity for students and faculty both to show up and see all of the work of the seniors and all classes are canceled on that day. So everyone is given that opportunity. And whether you take a pathway or center, all students also have these sets of classes that they'll take, which will include the two semesters of foreign language. And then that gets into my next slide as well. There'll be two social difference power courses. There'll be two writing intensive courses, one of which will be your FYS, which will make the rest much easier. And then one con course, which is our way of putting that liberal arts in action. And the goal really within that class setting is to bring the real world into the classroom. So a professional might come in or you might leave the classroom and go and collect samples and do real life work. So that might be a botany class where you actually look at nature and get your hands dirty. Okay, now getting into global engagement, which is one of the very big keystones of the Connections curriculum, that is trying to make con students global citizens and culturally literate. And so over half of con students study abroad and there's an office of study way that helps you find programs and they rotate every year. And there's a large selection to find something that fits within your major, within your timeline and whatever goals that, or whatever other goals you might have, whether it be country, region of the world or language. There are also a few other ways that camels are able to be global, including a study away, teach away program, which is where a con professor and about 10 students travel abroad to another country and a, and a local professor and that con professor both teach one to two classes. There's also flat courses, which are a great way to be global while on campus. These are just additional one credit, one hour courses on top of another course that is cultural by nature. And so you'll discuss in the target language. And so that might be a French or German film course. Well, you'll be able to discuss it in English because there'll be subtitles, but this flat course gives you that optional hour to be in the small group. Okay, there's also four years of career prep, including counseling, uh, that it's one-on-one -on -one with your advisor and $3,000 worth of funding that you're eligible for. Okay, and I think I'm right here on my time. So I'll just... Here's my information and I'll drop that in the chat, but thank you. Thank you so much to Connecticut College and uh, definitely check out the information they post in the chat to learn more. Next, we're heading over to SUNY Portland. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa, I'm a regional recruiter for SUNY Portland. Um, and I am a recruiter for Colorado. I'm currently in Denver, so hopefully I get to see some of you at some of the fairs this week. Um, so our overall student body is gonna be about 6,000 students. Um, we started in that building that you can see there at a um, girls only education school and have really grown from there. Uh, and we bring around 1,200 freshmen each year and about 500 to 600 transfers each year. So there's always new people coming out of the campus, both in the fall and the spring. Our average class size is going to be about 23 to 24. And then we have our student faculty ratio, which is going to be that small number that you can see. So you always have time to talk with students and other faculty members and TAs and tutors. Um, so there's always someone to talk to if you're having issues in your class. You can see a little aerial view of some of our campus there in the background. We are located in New York, switching over from Connecticut to New York. Um, we are one of 64 SUNY schools. So SUNY is the State University of New York. Uh, we are the largest university system in the nation. Uh, Portland is located right in central New York. So we're about 40 minutes south of Syracuse. We're about 40 minutes north of Binghamton and about three hours north of New York City. There's a lot of different areas that you can visit. We've got the lakes. We've got about four different ski resorts and an hour radius from us. Um, and of course, we have a lot of hiking as well. Um, we have students represented from 33 states. Uh, so we've got students coming from all over. Most of our students are going to be coming from the Northeast, but we have a lot of different students coming from Colorado, California, Texas, and kind of all over the place. Uh, we were ranked number one for campus safety in the state of New York, which is always good. I was a student and never felt unsafe. We do have the blue light system, so you're always um, just a button away from our university police department. We have a ton of different majors. As I mentioned, we started as an education school, so you can see all of those teachers certification programs there. 
Um, some of the little bit larger font majors are going to be more popular. I know we have a lot of different majors. Our sciences are pretty popular. Um, musical theater, all of our ology, so psychology, criminology, sociology, um, and then exercise science, sports management, and then our musical theater program. We have a BA or a BFA, which is new, and that's very popular for a lot of our out of state students. Um, we also have our pre program, so we have um, pre med, pre law, and pre vet. Basically, our pre programs are going to mean you're going to pick one of our majors, usually the sciences, especially for pre med or pre vet and work with an advisor in that area who's been through the process of applying to med school or vet school or whatever it may be, help you with your resume, help you with mock interviews and make sure that you're all set to go on to your next um, education. We have a ton of different internship opportunities. We have our career services office um, and they're gonna help you set up with any internships on campus, on campus jobs, um, anything off campus and then jobs um, once you graduate from SUNY Portland. They're always around for you, um, whether you're going to stay in New York or come all the way back to Colorado or go anywhere in the world, they will help you with their network of jobs. We have um, partnerships with the NFL, um, Disney World, um, MTV, ESPN. We have a lot of connections in New York City as well as Washington, D.C. and all the way out to the West Coast as well. Um, our alumni love to hire our new grads, which is pretty awesome. There's a lot of uh, opportunities there. We have a ton of clubs on campus. Like most colleges, there's really a club for anything. Um, it only takes three students and a faculty member to create a club on campus. We have a student-run podcast, um, magazine. We've got different dance opportunities. We've got uh, Greek lights. We have sororities and fraternities on campus, as well as varsity sports, club sports, and intramural sports as well. Uh, we are D3. We do have 25 varsity teams at the D3 level. Uh, we have a ton of national championships all across the board in all of our sports. Uh, our football game is played at either uh, the NFL Stadium, the Jet Stadium. We used to host their, host their training camp. Um, so last year we played our uh, rival football game at the Jet Stadium. Um, and then this year we're going to be playing our rival game at the Yankee Stadium. I'm not sure how you're going to play football on a baseball field, but I am confident that they will figure it out and another cool opportunity for our student athletes. Uh, we also have sport, uh, club sports, which are going to be a little less intense than our varsity. And then our intramural opportunities, which are going to be kind of pick up games once or twice a week as you please. The Student Life Center is, is our, one of our newer buildings, um, and it's really kind of the heart of SUNY Portland. Uh, our newest dining hall, the Bistro, is in there, and that's a grab and go. It's unlimited dining in there, which is pretty awesome, and you can see in the video. Um, upstairs is all of our cardio machines. We have an indoor track. Uh, downstairs is going to be all of our free weights. We have a CrossFit room, yoga room, meditation. Um, Zumba classes, spinning classes, kickboxing, we've got open courts, uh, we have a lap pool and a hot tub. Our students are always in here. Uh, we are a big uh, athletic facility. Our teams will not be practicing together in this, which is pretty awesome. So it's always going to have open machines or cardio equipment that you may need. Um, this is an area that a lot of people do hang out either to work out. We also have a, a gaming room, which has all the video games you could possibly imagine. Um, there's a pool table, a football table, so a lot going on in here. This is really kind of where our student body hangs out, kind of the heart of student Portland. Um, less fun is the expenses. Really what I want to talk about on this slide is the future New Yorker award. So that's given to all of our out-of-state students. It is a $7,500 award that is automatically given to our out-of-state students per year. Um, so it really brings our in-state and out-of-state tuition to about the same. In your junior and senior year, if you want to remain living on campus, we'll give you an extra $2,000 in those two years as well. Um, so a lot of opportunities for our out-of-state students. We do have on-campus tours um, for our out-of-state students. We will put you up in a hotel room. Um, so definitely contact me. I will put my email in the chat as well um, and throw it up one more time. Um, and we love to have uh, virtual opportunities or um, really anything that you have questions on. Um, feel free to email me or you can text me. Um, I'm in the Denver area often. So I'd love to meet some of you and meet you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shimi Portland. Um, is Hofstra University. Awesome. Let me share my screen with you.
Hi everyone, my name is Jane LaRocco and I work at Hofstra University. Although I live in New York, I am way closer than you might think at the moment. Um, I am coming to you live from my lovely hotel room in Westminster, Colorado. Um, you come from a fabulous place uh, that I enjoy visiting very much and Coloradans definitely enjoy calling Hofstra home as well. So a little bit about Hofstra, we are located in New York. We we are exactly 25 miles east of New York City. So we're in a very suburban residential area uh, surrounded by trees, single family homes. Our 240 acre campus is also an arboretum. Um, yet we have immediate and easy access in and out of New York City by train. The train ride from campus into New York is about 40 minutes. So it brings all of that fun, culture, entertainment, sports activities, Activities, internship opportunities, super close to you. And for you to get kind of a local equivalent, um, if you think of the distance between Boulder and downtown Denver, that's exactly 25 miles. So that's the same distance that Hofstra is from nearby New York City. So Hofstra is a medium-sized university. Uh, like many of my colleagues, we hover around the 6,100 uh, number of undergraduate students. We also offer a master's and PhD program. So we have graduate students on campus. Hofstra also has its own law school as well as its own medical school. And we all share the exact same campus together. So if you count every single Hofstra student, it brings our total enrollment to about 12,000 students. So even though we are medium sized, uh, one of the hallmarks of a Hofstra education is having small intimate sized classes. So regardless of major, regardless of year that you are at Hofstra, the average class size is 21 and classes are always capped at 35. So for the vast majority of students coming to the university, your Hofstra size classes very much resemble the same size classes that you've had throughout high school. For those of you that like facts and figures, that means that our student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. We want to ensure that our classes are interactive and reactive, that you can raise your hand, that you can ask questions, that you can share ideas and opinions, and certainly learn from your peers, as well as learn from a guiding faculty member. We do offer about 165 different undergraduate majors at the university. However, the most popular by far for entering first year students is I don't know yet, and that's perfectly fine. Students needn't declare a major until the end of their second year. So you have plenty of time to try on, try out, dabble a bit before you need to select the major that is best and right for you. This slide is not meant to give you eye strain, um, but rather just to give you an indication of the vast array of majors that we do offer. Hofstra, like many other colleges and universities, uh, houses its individual majors within different schools or colleges. For example, the Zarb School of Business is where you might find things like accounting and marketing, whereas in the Herbert School of Communication, you're gonna find things like journalism, film, you get, the, you get the point. Um, so certainly anything that you see as a major is also something that you can minor in at the university if you so choose. Certainly we feel uh, it's very important for you to balance out certainly the academic side of college along with the social or the personal side. Um, so for that reason, we offer a plethora of different uh, student run clubs and organizations. Like many of my colleagues that are here, we also offer very robust athletic programs. Hofstra is proud to have 21 um, NCAA Division I athletic teams. Our athletic teams are known as the Hofstra Pride. Pride because our mascots are two lions. Um, and as you all well know, a group of lions is known as a pride of lions. Um, we have about uh, 220 different student run clubs and organizations. That also includes things like Greek life, also includes uh, clubs that may revolve around an academic major, as well as clubs that relate to things that you enjoy, passions that you have, 
things you like to do in your free or spare time. Community service is definitely something that our Hofstra students excel at, um, whether it might be in the spring, Relay for Life, whether it might be uh, working at a uh, homeless and family shelter that is nearby to campus, or whether it might be being part of something known as Shake a Rake in the fall, where Hofstra students go out into the local community, rake and bag leaves for those folks that cannot do that on their own. So lots of ways for you to give back to the new community that you call home for the four years that you're at Hofstra. Certainly Hofstra is very much a residentially based campus community. About 82% of our students reside right on campus. So housing is guaranteed for all four years. Should you wish to reside off campus, you are more than welcome to do so. Our students come from a wide uh, geographic array, meaning that students are coming uh, certainly from about 40% of them are coming from New York State, but we are dominated by out of state students. So 60% come from outside of the state of New York, about 15 each year from the lovely state of Colorado. Just a quick glimpse at our uh, admission and application deadlines, as well as some ranges for you. Know that we too are test optional and have been since the year 2014. I really appreciate your signing in tonight and hanging out with us. Um, feel free to take a screenshot or a photo of my contact information, and I will also take care of putting that in the chat. Thanks and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Hofstra. And now our final college, I'd like to welcome Bard College. Hello, uh, thank you so much for having me. Sorry, I'm just gonna start my timer so I can manage that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get, get going. Um, so my name is Sam Prince. I'm representative of Bard College. Um, I am based in the Pacific Northwest. However, uh, Bard is not. Um, I'm gonna wait for it to load. There you go. Uh, so Bard is a thousand acre campus about 200 miles north of New York City. Bard is an incredibly scenic campus. One of the things you might notice is that the Hudson River flows all by, right by campus. You can even cast a line out and fish if that's one of the things that you enjoy. Um, the campus is also sandwiched between three historic manors. Two, uh, one of them is right there. One of them is right there. And one of them is over right there. Campus dates back to 1850. It's got this interesting blend of the old and the new, which also encapsulates a lot of the identity that we, we have as a college. We have a Frank Gehry designed performing arts space that is incredibly modern. It houses our theater and performing arts uh, programs, which are two of the flagship programs at Bard. Beyond that, we have a science building, which is incredible, almost brand new, and was built with student input. Um, there's a few design details that we'll talk about later on that help you know that it was designed with student input. One of the things that I like people to know about BARD is that we are close enough to New York City. Uh, we, we're about two hours by train. You either catch it from Poughkeepsie, which is a 40 minute cab ride, or you catch it from Rhinecliff, which is about a 20 minute cab ride. Um, or more, more, more likely you have friends who, who uh, were driving that way too. We definitely don't empty out on the weekends, but we do have a fair number of students who take advantage of the city a couple times a semester. Um, I know that Bard might be a new name for some of you, so I wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of see some of the facts and figures that define who we are. Um, we are a diverse and global student body. We pride ourselves on being an Annandale-based campus with a a global view. And in addition to our Annandale campus, we have four partner universities, um, the most prominent of which is going to be Bard College Berlin. Bard College Berlin is a way for you to start your college experience abroad. If you should choose, you can spend a full year out in Berlin on our campus there. A lot of our language classes also have a study abroad uh, component. 50% of Bard students choose to study abroad at some point during their time at Bard. 40% of Bard students identify as um, students of color. We have an average class size of right around 14, um, but uh, no TA. So if you see a professor on a on a syllabus, that professor is going to show up on day one. Bard is a small school. 1900 undergrads means that your professors are going to know you. They're going to know your story. They're going to know who you are and what it matters to you. Bard classes are discussion based. Our students are interested in engaging with big ideas and they want to grapple outwardly with them with other people. 
Um, Bard is a multi multidisciplinary school because of, by the very nature of the liberal arts, we are gonna invite you into trying things that don't necessarily have to do with the major you intend to be. As a matter of fact, we're gonna require you to be undecided for your first two years at Bard, no matter how certain you are in your academic path. Um, hundred and that number is a little bit old. We're down to 135 student run organizations on campus. But one of the really wonderful things about going to a college like Bard is that if there is a, um, a program that you want to see that you don't see, you are welcome to start that here. I interviewed an amazing applicant yesterday who was a top 50 female identifying flag football player in her state. She's like, well, do you guys have that? Said, no, but we can bring it to us. Like we're really excited to, to do that. Um, I bring this up just to show you, we have a wide variety of programs. We do not have minors. We have what are called concentrations, which are lenses on which you might look on your major. Um, I wanna talk to you quickly about some of the ways that you might apply to BARD because there are a couple that are more unique. Uh, we have been SAT, ACT optional for going on our 45th year. Um, it is something that is really important to us to know that your academic story is about more than your test scores. BARD is a reading and writing intensive college. We, had a, we talk about a lot about how you're gonna, we're gonna push you to be a better writer no matter how great you are as a high school writer. So that's a big part of what we weight in an application. We have an application fee free, application fee free for going on a decade. Our goal is to remove as many barriers as possible between you and your dream school. The other thing that I like to note is that we have a few application methods that are unique to us. If you are a student who has a more complex academic history, one that includes coming into your own a little bit later on, we have a method of applying called the BARD entrance exam. The BARD entrance exam allows you to apply, submitting only three essays spread out across four of our academic programs. They're graded by a BARD professor. Should they be a B plus or higher, you are conditionally granted admission by submitting nothing else. So if you're a student who is intellectually curious, but is a late developing, that's a great option for you. We also have a way of applying called the immediate decision program. You apply by the early action deadline, you come to um, we have a virtual version of it. That's gonna be the, sorry, it is the first three Friday, uh, third, Friday, Saturdays in November. The second one is gonna be catered to folks who are, who are far away from, from campus like Colorado. Um, you go to an interview, you go to a Bard style class, and you are told the next business day what your decision is. So if you apply on a um, Friday, you hear back on a Monday. If you apply on a Saturday, you hear back on a Tuesday. Or, uh, yeah, on Tuesday. Uh, thank you so much for um, being here tonight. It, it's really cool to get the chance to speak to, so, to, uh, to, to students. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bard, and I'd like to invite all the admissions reps um, back for a very, a very, very quick um, little takeaway. So, um, if you just had, you know, ten seconds to, uh, to leave the students with a little takeaway of if there's something that you want them to leave here knowing about your school, what would it be? And we'll start with Sacred Heart. Ten seconds. <laughs> um. We're counselors first. We're here to support you and really help find that fit. So please use us as a resource first and foremost. Yes, I echo what Sarah said. And um, if you're ever on the East Coast, um, these are all lovely people that you can meet while you're out here and uh, reach out again if you if you do have questions and if you are visiting, reach out. We'll give you great recommendations of where to go and where to eat and things like that. <laughs> if you're interested in learning more, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'm always available and there's a lot of other opportunities. So I'll be doing visits in the area uh, around this time. So. I think my biggest advice would be to ask questions. Um, I would also say just because you haven't heard of a college doesn't mean that that's not the right college for you. Um, we are all out of state. Colleges and some of us, you might not have heard of any of us, um, but we're all great colleges and it's 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 good to do your research and look at, into colleges that you may not have heard of. Certainly think of us as people that are helping you uh, throughout this college admission process, but also don't ever forget to reach out to your college counselor at school. They're an excellent resource for you, know all things college search and college enrollment related. Um, so don't forget that they're there to help and serve you as well. Uh, take a breath. You're in the middle of a really challenging and stressful part of the year and also something, a process that's incredibly 
um, amazing. So take a breath, take a chance to appreciate the fact that you have uh, you know, six counselors on here that are all really excited to speak to you. And no doubt, this is one of many that you're going to. Um, congrats on getting this far into it and know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Thank you so much to all of our reps who came to share about their schools. Thank you to all the students tonight who are participating. Um, we appreciate you coming out and connecting. Um, as soon as you leave this session, there's going to be a quick survey that we'd like you to fill out. It's just five questions. Um, don't forget to sign up for more sessions. And the recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com slash Greater Denver. Everyone have a terrific night. And yeah, that's all. That's all we got, folks. Good night.